Hello, YouTube friends. Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. You know, sometimes uh, when a fish dies and it's obvious why they died, uh, like in the case of um, I had a fish just recently who didn't make it. I put him into uh, I put him in, in, into quarantine after uh, he suffered uh, from a beating that another fish gave him in the middle of the night. I never figured out who beat him up. I moved him, removed him from the tank right away, but he didn't survive. Well, those that's obvious. That's obvious. This fish took a beating, and that beating put a tremendous amount of stress on this fish. And a few days later, maybe a week later, actually, after uh, treating him with antibiotics and putting him in, in, in quarantine, he, he passed away. He didn't make it. Well, that's very obvious. There's no mystery. And uh, But you know what? Sometimes a fish looks great. They look great. They, they're swimming around. They've got great color, uh, no apparent damage, no signs of, uh, of distress, no damage on the fins, uh, no damage on the lips from fighting in a lip lock of some kind. Uh, their stomach is normal shape. Uh, everything looks good. And the next morning they're dead. And uh, those are the ones that drive you crazy because you can't figure out why it happened. So let's go ahead and uh, let's talk about that today. So um, I compiled a list. I mean, you know me, I love lists. And so I, 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 I picked the top five reasons why uh, I feel, in my opinion, and I want to hear your opinion. Share it below in the comments uh, what, what you've come across. But certainly, in my opinion, the top five reasons why a fish will suddenly just tip over on you. And even after you pull them out and you give them a good look over, you can't tell. You look them over and you can't tell, why did this fish die? I mean, he even has good color when he's dead. It doesn't make any sense. So, uh, so here's... Here's the list. We'll go from one to five. And number one, uh, number one is stress. Now, stress can be for a lot of reasons. Stress can be because of the trip from where you bought him to your home. Stress can be because of a uh, a rapid shift in temperature. Maybe you didn't temperature match before filling up the tank. Uh, maybe you didn't float the bag long enough. A rapid shift in pH, that can be very hard on a fish. So uh, a shift of some kind uh, can, can create stress. And if that fish has anything going on, anything dormant, parasites, illness, bacteria, under stress, that, that's, that's sitting in that fish is going gonna, is gonna to manifest, it's going to take hold the immune system of the fish is going to be compromised. Same thing with people. You put a person under stress. Some people have a higher tolerance than others, but you put a person under stress for a long period of time, something is going to show up. The weak link in their system is going to come to the surface. So uh, stress through aggression, stress through some rapid change uh, in the environmental circumstances, uh, something going on that causes stress can cause a death, a sudden death in a fish who will have something all of a sudden take hold and it kills them off. Uh, number two, related to stress, these are all related really, but number two is a shock. Uh, shock can be a sudden shift in temperature, sudden shift in pH. A shock can come from being dropped into an environment where they are being relentlessly harassed and uh, you know can't you know really can't find their 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 place in the pecking order they can't find some peace and because of it they they go into a bit of a shock they can get shock also from an impact I had a fish one time that was shocked from a blow to the side uh, but that was you know when I pulled them out of the tank you could see where they were hit so that doesn't fit the criteria I'm talking about. You can't tell why the fish died. So a shock from a, um, you know, from a, a shift in pH, temperature, things of this nature can cause a shock in the fish. And uh, usually those are temperature, pH, uh, are, are, are the two most common 
that you hear of. You forgot to treat the water before you put it in the tank. Uh, the city had just treated because of a storm with a lot of chlorine, a lot of chloramine, and it shocked the fish. That, that can have a big impact. Number two is shock. Number three, number three, starvation. Believe it or not, you can actually unintentionally be starving your fish, either through providing very poor quality food that has a lot of fillers and not a lot of nutrients, or you have a tank where dominant fish are not allowing subdominant fish to eat. You might see a sign when that one dies, because when you pull them out, the, the their stomach, their abdomen, right, the tummy area is going to be a little sunken in. Not because of parasites necessarily, even though under starvation, parasites might actually start to manifest because again, you're going to have a compromised immune system. But other fish are not letting that fish get to the food. This is why you have to be particularly observant. You have to really observe when feeding to make sure that the fish are getting food. And uh, you look, you make sure they're getting it. And then if you notice that someone is, is being forced out of the, of the feeding area, you can fake, fake the dominant fish out. Feed to one far corner, then feed to another far corner. Uh, maybe throw the pellets into the tank so they sink fast. Uh, maybe mix pellets and flakes so bottom feeders, mid feeders, midway feeders, and top feeders all get a shot. Okay. Otherwise, unintentionally, you might be starving your fish and not even know it. Number four on this list is uh, an internal issue or genetics. Now, what do I mean by that? There might be something. There are diseases, and in some cases, they're not contagious, which, which contributes to the mystery. You might have a, a disease internally that kills the fish, that uh, I think there's certain kinds of tuberculosis, certain kinds of uh, illnesses. I'm not an entirely an expert in this area, but there are diseases that can occur internally that have no outward signs and can kill that one fish. They come with it. And you can also get a genetic issue going on. And by that, what I mean is just like adults can hit a certain age, you know, they seem to be in good health. And at a certain age, they drop over dead from a heart issue, a cardiovascular, some kind of an issue. The same thing can happen with fish. If you buy a fish that happens to be genetically um, compromised in some way, that fish will hit a certain age. I had a, um, a star sapphire. Star sapphire looked great, looked great up into about four inches, three to four inches, and then started to become a bit deformed. Uh, there was a genetic issue with that fish. I put him in quarantine. It didn't matter. He, he uh, was being fed great food. Water quality was perfect. Driving me crazy. There was a genetic issue with that fish, and there wasn't really much I could do about it. So internal, unperceptible, unless you do a uh, an autopsy, right? Uh, you're not going to be able to figure out what happened. So genetics can be an issue. Number five, and I'm going to give you a bonus at the end, like I normally do, number five. I'll give you number six, but number five is old age. And this is the one that drives a lot of folks crazy because these fish will look beautiful. They're adult, mature fish with full color, and they're gorgeous. And sometimes as they age, they can start to show signs of age. They look a little worn down, a little tattered, are not quite as brilliant as they used to be, not quite as active. But sometimes they hit old age and they just tip over. Now, when you bought the fish, unless you know the breeder, you really don't know how old that fish was when you bought it. And if you buy a colored up, a colored up adult, that fish might have been five years old when you got them. And maybe in captivity, that fish has a lifespan of seven to nine years. So they tip over on you and you're testing your water. 
you're, uh, you're keeping an eye on the other fish because you're afraid there's a disease. Maybe you're hitting the tank with general cure. You're doing all these things, and guess what? The fish lived his, his or her life cycle, was over, and it was, don't beat yourself up. You didn't do anything horribly wrong. The fish just died, okay? Now, number six, a bonus tip. You don't have enough oxygen in the tank. A lack of oxygen. Now, this, this one will drive you crazy, and I'll tell you why. Very often, your bigger fish, the ones that, have, that need the most oxygen, are going to die. And when they die, that oxygen that's in the tank is enough for the remaining fish. And so you pull out the dead fish, you check your water, you check the tap, you hit the tank with meds, you do all this crazy stuff, everybody seems okay. And it's fine until you go and buy a couple more fish and put them in, and then all of a sudden one of your older, bigger fish tips over and dies because you're sort of right on that cusp of not having enough oxygen. If you see the fish working their mouths, even a little bit, it's not normal. Your fish should not be working their mouths. Uh, take take a look at um, take a look at these fish here. They were just fed. These fish were just fed, and you'll notice. Look at that mouth on that Johnson I solo. He's not working it. He's not working it. He's not doesn't have that gasp going on. It's not normal for a mouth to be working constantly. Look at that fire, uh, that flame tail. The mouth is just shut. It's just shut. It's just locked shut. And they, they just fed. They're, they're fired up right now. So their hearts are beating. They just went through a, a feeding frenzy. Deep water, mouth shut. Albino strawberry, mouth shut. That's the way a fish would look. That's the way a fish looks normally. So if that fish, if your fish are working their mouths even a little bit, add some surface agitation. Make sure that you're, you know, add a bubbler, uh, position your outputs of your canisters so that they break up the surface, add a power head. Because if you're right on that borderline where you don't have enough, your bigger fish with the higher oxygen requirements are gonna die on you. The other fish are gonna be fine because now you don't have that oxygen requirement and it's gonna drive you crazy because you're not gonna be able to figure out why they died, okay? So that's your bonus tip and uh, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed and got something out of the video. If you did, be sure to hit that, uh, that sub button and uh, the bell, tell YouTube that you like the channel and that way they'll recommend, recommend it to other fish keepers. And uh, join the Facebook group, Ben O apostrophe sickly by going to Facebook, type that group name in and be sure to answer all the questions to get in or the moderators don't let you in. And for some behind the scenes, follow me on Instagram at ben.o.cichlid. Thank you very much for tuning in, my friend. You are appreciated. I hope to see you on Saturday for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. All right, thank you. Bye-bye.